Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I wanted to talk to you about how to identify poison ivy. Poison ivy is a plant that's very notorious and infamous for causing skin rashes because of the essential oils that are within the plant. The essential oils within poison ivy can last for months, in some cases, on clothes, shoes, gloves, hands, skin, etc. Some people are not allergic to this plant, and some are extremely allergic. This is a plant that causes a lot of problems around the home because it generally likes to grow around trees, fence posts, and things like that. So it's important to know how to identify this plant. So let's get right into the identification factors of poison ivy. Right here in front of us, we can see this three-leaved plant. Now these actually look like leaves, but they are technically leaflets. I'm going to be using a stick to be pointing out some of the features of this plant because I do not want to touch this plant, mainly because I have an open wound on my hand. And I do not want to get the essential oil of this plant within my bloodstream, and I don't want to pass it on to anybody else. Someone that I live with is allergic to poison ivy, unfortunately. I myself am not allergic to this plant, but it's also possible to develop allergies over time to this plant. Now if we look very closely here, we're going to notice these three leaves, or leaflets. These are actually leaflets, though they are separated by a little bit of a stem. These are actually leaflets. The leaflets of poison ivy are lance-shaped, and there are going to be lobes or teeth along the margins like we can see right here. We see this little bitty lobe starting. If we look on this one, we can see little bitty lobes again along the margins of the leaves. In the earlier stages of poison ivy's growth, you're going to notice a more glossy appearance. Sometimes the leaflets can appear red or they will be red in color. And that's another key feature to look for. But note that not every poison ivy leaflet or le set of leaves will have this feature. As we can see in front of us, there is no red here, just a slight glossy appearance. If we look at these leaves back over here, we can notice that they are kind of dull in green color. They're not red, they're not glossy, but it is poison ivy. You may also notice that lobe, the very distinct lobe, to the very bottom right in the frame. If we look over at this one, we can see again that lobe on one of the leaflets. Right here at the tip of the stick, we're going to notice a little red tinge or a little red mark. This is indicative of poison ivy on the tips of the leaflets. I've noticed this on almost every leaflet where the leaf stem joins to each leaflet, there's going to be these red tinges. Now once we're looking at another set of leaves, we can see this red tinging and these red marks that join up right here along the leaflets to the leaf stem at the petiole of each one of the leaflets. There are other plants that have this red mark at this portion of the leaf where the leaf joins the stem. That is not in itself indicative of poison ivy. You want to make sure that you're focusing on the leaves and the shape of the leaflets before you just automatically jump to the red marking and red tinging indicating poison ivy. Poison ivy can take various forms. Right in front of us, we're noticing the climbing vine form of poison ivy. It can spread itself through various different means. One of those is by seeds, which are dispersed by animals and birds, because they are, unfortunately for us humans, immune to the essential oil within this plant, and they're able to eat the berries and disperse the seeds. It can also spread itself out by pollination, and it can also spread itself through rhizomes or spreading rootstocks that go throughout the soil, and that is how it can spread, and this vine will continue to spread and climb over whatever it can. Right in front of us, we are noticing the climbing vine version of poison ivy. It can also be a shrub-like plant, or it can also be a creeping plant that kind of creeps along the ground as well. So you want to make sure to keep in mind there are three versions of poison ivy that you may see. 
as poison ivy climbs along trees like we have in front of us, we're going to notice this woody, vine-like structure growing up along inside of the ridges of the bark. Poison ivy will attach itself through the tree and actually into the tree itself. It can also be destructive to masonry and brickwork. So that's something else to keep in mind when you are looking at this plant. Poison ivy does produce flowers. As we can see right here, they're sort of a whitish green color, and we can see them coming out of the nodes on the leaf stem of the plant. They form in rather dense clusters, just like we can see in front of us. After this plant glows to flower, it will produce berries, and these berries contain the seeds that birds and animals will use to spread this plant. I apologize for the wind. It is extremely windy today. If we look at these leaflets in front of us, we can notice the lobes on the very front leaflet right here on each side, and then we can notice the lobe on the back of the back leaflets. This is another one of the varying shapes of leaves that poison ivy can have. It does have variable leaves, meaning that the leaves can actually uh, have various shapes to them. If we look along the margins of this leaflet right here, we can notice the teeth that are growing along the sides of the leaf or the margin of the leaf. So you're going to notice teeth and lobes growing along the leaflets of poison ivy. So make sure that you keep this in mind whenever you are looking at this plant and trying to identify it. As we follow a mature poison ivy plant up the tree or whatever it is growing on, we're going to notice these clusters of flowers growing out of the axles or the nodes of each set of leaves along the leaf stem of the plant. There are some plants that people confuse with poison ivy, and we're going to talk about one of the major plants that people confuse with poison ivy right now. In front of us is a plant known as Virginia creeper. This is a plant that some people confuse with poison ivy, poison oak, and also poison sumac. However, all of these plants look very different whenever you look at the leaves and the leaf structure of each one of them. As we notice on this one in front of us, this Virginia creeper vine in front of us, we're going to notice there are actually five leaflets. These leaves are divided into a palmate structure instead of divided into individual leaflets like we see on poison ivy. So there are five leaflets on Virginia creeper instead of three that we see on poison ivy. Virginia creeper is a poisonous plant and it contains calcium oxalate crystals within its leaves and its stem. Calcium oxalate crystals can cause an intense burning sensation in the mouth and the throat. This is not a plant to be consumed. However, it does not usually cause a skin rash or dermatitis in people who brush up against it or get the oils on their skin. Some people are allergic to this plant, but not very many are allergic to brushing up against it, like we see with our poison ivy, our poison oaks, or our poison sumacs. Now if we look at the petiole, where all of these leaflets come out on Virginia creeper, there is also a slight red tinge or a red mark, just like we noticed on poison ivy. These red marks or red tinges are not always indicative of a poisonous plant. They're not always indicative of poison ivy or Virginia creeper. So make sure you keep that in mind when you are trying to identify a plant that may be poisonous, that not all of them are going to have these and just because a plant does have these red marks or red tinges also does not make it poisonous. Virginia creeper is also a climbing vine, just like poison ivy is. However, Virginia creeper is not destructive to masonry or brickwork because it attaches through a completely different mechanism than poison ivy. So I hope this video has helped you guys to identify poison ivy. I thank all of you guys for watching. And if you want to learn more about wild edibles or medicinal plants, please make sure to subscribe.